A long time ago, 11-year-old me was given a controller at my uncle's house with a multiplayer game on the screen. As he left the room to go celebrate New Year's with more of my family, words illuminated the screen saying, Battlefield Bad Company 2. For the next several hours, I played that game completely enthralled with how unique it was compared to some of the other shooter games that I had played in the past. Little did I know what this moment would do to me in the future. Ambient. Contact. What's going on guys? Poet here. And let's talk about pretty much the only genre of game I play anymore, Melsum Games. Milsim games, or military simulator games, are exactly how they sound. They stick the player in a first-person environment with more realistic mechanics to worry about. These mechanics can range from little things like reload times for different types of firearms, or the actual headache that is logistics and supply runs in a drawn-out conflict, knowing precisely which button you press in the cockpit of a fighter jet that won't eject you from the plane, and what kind of ammo type is better than the other. Yes, games like these exist, and yes, they are fun. Obviously, not all Milsim games are the same, but usually they stick to some pretty core values that make them more difficult than things like COD. Common signs that you're playing a Milsim-esque game is a low time to kill and a heavy reliance on teamwork and communication, just to name two glaringly obvious ones among a hundred other signs. While these gameplay mechanics may limit enjoyment from newcomers, which who can blame them, those very mechanics are what separate Milsim games from things like arcade shooters. Accuracy is something I believe Milsim games strive for. Some games like Tarkov have it worked down to the bullet type, armor class, and weight, rig type, and backpack you bring into an operation. Some games even go so far as to include hunger, thirst, and stamina, which is affected by what you're wearing or carrying, which doesn't really exist anywhere outside of these games except for survival games like Project Zomboid. While stamina and weight and how fast or slow you can move in these games can be annoying as hell and borderline frustrating at all times, do you always want to have to worry about somebody wearing a 45 pound thing of armor running around as light as a feather gunning you down? No. These types of systems with bullet penetration and fragmentation and the way you move with how much weight you're carrying adds to how you and your teammates need to coordinate your roles as a squad to achieve success, bringing in that reliance on the teamwork aspect I talked about earlier. While teamwork isn't always the best thanks to very smart individuals on the internet, Sometimes you can meet people at the beginning of a game, and by the end of it, it's like you two have always been friends. I'd argue that teamwork in these games brings out the best in people, especially when you have a good mix of civilians and active duty servicemen playing the game together. It makes for a pretty damn good time. Stop it, you're such a bitch. <laughs> can I get a hoya? Oh, yeah? oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And on the topic of good times with these games, they don't always have to be taken seriously every time you boot them up. A 50-50 mix of trying to take the game seriously and just completely goofing off is probably the best way to experience Milsim games. Ready or Not, in my mind, is a perfect example of a game that can be played in both ways without ruining the experience for others. Sometimes my buddies and I will load into a match of that game and just completely forget about rules of engagement. Fuck. Oh my god, I, okay, I floored them. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trade these memories for the world because honestly, nothing's better than taking a dark and serious game and turning it into a morbidly funny experience. However, whenever you and your squad do run these games seriously and do succeed, the payoff is more often than not super satisfying. Let's look at a game I've recently been diving into, DCS, or Digital Combat Simulator. 
Before I go further, yes, Top Gun definitely persuaded me to make the jump into air combat simulators. But who can blame me? Those movies are incredible tools for increasing enlistment. Learning how to fly a jet in that game is next to impossible. It's like as accurate as it can be with every jet they have in that game. I've put almost 70 hours into DCS, 30 or 40 of them, trying to channel my inner Tom Cruise with the F-14, and I am still horrible at avoiding missiles and landing on aircraft carriers. What the fuck did you just fucking say about the missile, you little bitch? That being said, the night me and my army buddy got our first air-to-air -air kill as a duo in the F-14 might as well have been our magnum opus. It was such a rewarding feeling, and I don't know too many other games that have given me that rush of euphoria since. Now this isn't all saying that these games are the end-all be-all of video games. Everyone's different in how they play games, but personally I can't get the same level of satisfaction I get from these games by like, speedrunning Minecraft. All in all, these games are a blast and a great way to meet some pretty cool people. If you haven't ever played any of these games, or have been on the fence about Milsim games in general, I highly recommend you try some of the ones I have on the screen right now. They're good entry level games that will stick you in a squad with people in case you're a solo gamer. All of which, I have also personally played, and all varying in how realistic they portray combat. If you play these types of games already, tell me about some of your favorite ones or favorite experiences in the comments below. That's all I've got for this one though guys. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, help the YouTube overlords bless my channel. If you want to support the channel, a sub goes a long way. I'm Poet, and I'll catch you next time.